So let's start. Seb, my friend, can you read to me the title? It says lesson three colon, and then what's the title? The event A or B. I can summarize this whole lesson in one sentence, and the sentence is, or means add. Well, okay, it, or means add with a few complications. So I, I can't just say that and say, here's the homework. But in probability, when you see the word or, what you're really going to end up doing is you're going to end up adding probabilities, except with some complications. So I wrote down here, when do you add probabilities? And I gave you a lovely, do you remember what kind of a diagram we called these circular diagrams? Began with the letter V. Okay, a little Venn diagram. Okay. How many outcomes are there? How many events are there? How many dots are there? Count? Thir okay, 13. 13 outcomes. Uh, you know what? There's 13 cards in one suit. So let's say each of those is a heart. You have 13 different hearts or whatever. What's the probability of A? I wrote down here, if each of these is equally likely, find the probabilities by counting the outcomes. You may recall a few days ago, Brooke, I said, if you can count it, we can solve it. So what's the probability of A? How many ways are there to be successful in event A? Four out of? What's the probability of event B? What's the probability that you're in either A or B or both? How many dots are in A? How many dots are in A? Four. How many dots are in B? So how many are in one or the other or both? Seven. Can you see a way that you could get the answer to A or B by looking at A and looking at B? We'll come back to that. Oh, and then I wrote, uh, what's the probability of A and B? Now remember, A and B means in both circles at the same time. It's a trick question. How many dots are in both circles at the same time? None. There's no overlap. Another word for and overlap. So zero. What's the relationship between the probability of A or B, probability of A and probability of B? I think we can say this. In other words, Foster, what I'm really saying is 7 out of 13 was equal to 4 out of 13 plus 3 out of 13, right? See, what we're trying to do is, is see if we can get some kind of an equation so that if we don't have a lovely Venn diagram, we can still figure this out. Oh, Mr. Duick, you said or means add. It looks to me like or does mean add. It looks to me like if I add the probability of A plus the probability of B, that will give me the probability of A or B. Almost, but not quite. Situation two. Look at the Venn diagram for situation two. Caitlin's going to put her phone away because she's not that important. Look at the Venn diagram for situation two. What's the difference between situation two and situation one? How are these two diagrams different? OK, overlap. This is why I said or means add, except when it's a little more complicated. First of all, what's the probability of A? How many dots are there in circle A? Careful, don't say three. There's four, yes? How many dots are in circle B? Probability of B is 5 out of 13. What's the probability of A or B? How many dots are in one circle or the other circles or both circles? Well, let's see. Count with me in just a second. Let me bring it back. Count with me. 1, 2, Pretty sure the answer is 8 out of 13. Yes? What's the probability of A and B? How many are overlapping? How many are happening at the same time? How many are in both circles? You may notice that this time, when you add 
4 out of 13 and 5 out of 13, you don't get that. You get 9 out of 13. Can anybody see how can I use this, this, and this to get that? The probability of A or B, probability of A, probability of B minus the probability of A and B. In fact, you know what? Caitlin, you could argue that's exactly the same equation as I wrote up here because you could argue that I did go plus zero. I did add the and, except the and happened to be zero. That's actually the formula too. I'm not going to bother arguing that, but you could. Now, underneath each box here, I have a new terminology, and you're going to need to know this term, so underline it. It's the term mutually exclusive. It says this. Events A and B are mutually exclusive because, and the short answer is, no overlap. If you want a mathematical answer, and is zero. But I just think no overlap. What that really means is uh, can't happen at the same time. Uh, these ones are not mutually exclusive because there is overlap. Or if you want to write it mathematically, Christina, what you can say is the probability of A and B is not equal to zero. That's an A. A and B not equal to zero. What do we mean by mutually exclusive? The English definition is can't happen at the same time. Let me give you an example. Suppose event A is a red card. Suppose event B is a black card. Are those mutually exclusive? Can you be red and black at the same time? Those are mutually exclusive. The and would be zero. Suppose event A was a red card. Suppose event B was a jack. Are those mutually exclusive? Are those mutually exclusive? No. no. You can be a red jack. You can be red and a jack at the same time. There would be some overlap. There would be an and. And would not be zero. So usually, Jake, if you know the events, you'll be able to reason your way as to whether it can happen at the same time, whether it's mutually exclusive, no overlap, or can happen at the same time, not mutually exclusive. There is some overlap. Hey, you're rolling a die. Suppose event A is an even number and event B is an odd number. Mutually exclusive or not? Can't happen, you can't be even and odd at the same time. Suppose event A is a uh, factor of three, sorry, multiple of three, and event B is an even number. Can you be a multiple of three and an even number? Yet six is a multiple of three, and it's even. those would be mutually exclusive. What if they don't tell you what the events are? Then you're asking, is A and B not? In fact, then you're asking, to get the correct answer, do I use this equation here? Then it's not mutually exclusive. If this equation, the top equation works, then they are mutually exclusive. It sounds complicated. It's not. Let's try a few. So here is our addition law. The general case, the one size fits all equation is this. A or B means the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the overlap. However, if A and B are mutually exclusive, that means there is no overlap. That means that and is zero, in which case the special subcase is that, because and is zero, so why write it? And Rosanna, this is why I said at the very beginning of this lesson, or means add uh, with a little complications. You do have to double check, is there an overlap or not? Hey, event A is 
flipping ahead. Event B is rolling a six. Ooh, we'll have to think about that. Can you roll a six and flip ahead at the same time? It depends what we mean by that. So we'll come back to that stuff. Cards. Example one. One card is randomly drawn from a deck of 52 cards. Define the following events. Event S is the card is a spade. You know what? I'll circle that in black. Let's circle all of the spades. I think all of the spades are that group right there, yes? <coughs> Event R is the card is red. Hey, why don't I cleverly use red? Where are the red cards? Here. By the way, these two events, mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive? Mutually exclusive, no overlap. Uh, event F is the card is the face card. What are face cards? OK. Nope, oh, come on. I changed colors, I thought. Come on. There we go. Is there some overlap with that one? So you see it in the sample space? Which events are mutually exclusive? What is S mutually exclusive to? What does S not overlap with? Is S mutually exclusive with F? Uh, don't think so. Is R mutually exclusive with F? No, don't think so. In fact, you know what? The only two that have no overlap, the only two that can't happen at the same time, you can't be a spade and a red card at the same time. You can be a spade and a face card. You can be a red card and a face card. So two ways to think about mutually exclusive. Overlapping on the Venn diagram or Brook in English uh, happens at the same time. Can be both. I wrote down here, determine the following probabilities by counting. OK, how many probability of S? First of all, how many events are there in my sample space? How many outcomes are there in my sample space? How many cards are there in a deck? So this is going to be out of 52. What's the probability if I pick a random, deck of, a random card from the deck? What's the probability that I get a spade? How many spades are there? Circled. Did I get one? Hey, that's a nice. Sorry, what's, what's the probability? OK. So by counting, I can tell you it's what's the probability of getting a red card? What's the probability of getting a card that's a red card and a spade at the same time? What's the probability of getting a card that's a red card and a spade at the same time? Zero. Zero. <clears throat> Fancy word for that is mutually exclusive, no overlap. You can't be a red card and a spade at the same time. It's impossible, right? What's the probability of getting a spade or a red card? That would be the three rows that I've circled, which I'm pretty sure is 13 times 3. 39 out of 52. I'm using the counting method. And then we're going to use the formula to see if we get the same answer. Uh, the next column, next row, we said probability of spade. We already answered that. 13 out of 52. Hey, what's the probability of a face card? 12. That's what we circled. Yeah, 3 times 4, 12. What's the probability of a spade and a face card at the same time? How many are circled by both the spade circle and the face card circle at the same time? Three. Three. What's the probability of being a spade or a face card? Now, what you would do if we're using the counting method is you would go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. How many? 22. 
The counting method takes a long time. Let's see if we can get there using formulas. So for part B, I said, now find the probabilities using the addition law. The probability of S or R, what does or mean? It means the probability of S plus the probability of R minus the overlap. This is formula, I think, number six on the pink sheet that I gave you. Is it number six? Yep. Okay. Underneath that, let's fill in the numbers. And we're going to try and do this. I've got my spades no longer. In fact, I'm going to scroll down so I can't see any of the numbers from before. I would say to myself, self, how many spades are there in the deck? I'm not going to count. I know this. How many spades are there in the deck? How many spades are there in the deck? Out of plus how many red cards are there in the deck? Half of them. 26 out of 52 minus what's the overlap? So the answer is going to be 13 out of 52 plus 26 out of 52. How do I add fractions? You know what? Before I add fractions, I need a common denominator. <gasps> this is why I told you, Christina, we're not going to reduce fractions until the very end, because most of the time, if we don't reduce fractions, we'll have a lovely common denominator. What do you think 13 out of 52 plus 26 out of 52 is? I'll give you a hint. It's going to be out of 52. 39. Is that what we got by counting on the previous example? Is that what we got by counting on the previous example? Yes. The point being, hey, the formula works. Let's try the next one, the probability of S or F. This would be the probability of S, or means add, plus the probability of F minus the overlap. What's the probability that you get a spade? How many spades are there in the deck? 13 out of 52? How many face cards are there in the deck? Out of 52? Minus, how many face cards are also spades at the same time? What's the overlap? I'm adding and subtracting fractions. I need a common denominator. Oh, I have a common denominator. 13 out of 52 plus 12 out of 52, that's 25. Take away 3, what's 25? Take away 3. Is that what I got on the previous example when I counted? Yes. By the way, for what it's worth, if you get your calculators out, I've showed you this little fraction button right here. You can actually type this in. You can go 13, fraction button, 52. That's how you type in 13 over 52. Plus 12, fraction button, 52. Minus 3, fraction button, 52. And then if you press equals, it, the only issue is it's going to give the answer in lowest terms. Is 11 over 26 the same as 22 over 52? Yes. So if you suck at fractions, you can always fall back on the crutch. You've got the calculator that can do it. However, Kylie, we're, we're, we're going to have common denominators most of the time. So I tend to use it until we get way more complicated. What does or mean? Add minus the overlap, minus anything that happens twice. Example two. There are 30 students in a class. 
16 students surf the internet and 10 students use email. Of these students, six do both. What's the probability that a randomly selected student in the class surfs the internet or uses email? There's two ways to do this. You can do this using the formula. You can do this using a Venn diagram. I tend to prefer the formula. Sorry, I said that wrong. I tend to prefer the Venn diagram, but I'll show you both. First of all, um, how about let's say How about, let's use the letter I for uh, internet. What would be a good letter to use for email? Okay. So here's my question. What's the probability of I? How many students surf the internet? Read, how many students surf the internet? Out of how many? Okay. What's the probability of E? What's the probability of I and E. What's the overlap? Right? So if I wanted to use a formula, first, what's this question asking me to find? What is the probability that what? Did you say or? Yeah. You know what this is asking me to find? In terms of an equation, it wants me to find the probability of I or E. Yes? Surf the internet or uses email. What does or mean? Add minus and. Or means add. minus and. All right. Sixteen out of thirty plus ten out of thirty minus I think I can do this in my head. What's 16 plus 10? Oh, first of all, do I have a common denominator? Mm -hmm. Conveniently. Uh, what's 16 plus 10? 26, take away 6. Or in lowest terms, 2 out of 3. So there's the formula. When do I use the formula? I use it if they're only asking me one thing, if there's no part B, C, D, if there like, is a part B, a part C, a part D, I'll use a Venn diagram because the Venn diagram will tell me everything. I'll show you what I mean. What's a Venn diagram? I would start out by drawing a big rectangle and two circles overlapping. One, two. I'll call the left-hand circle I for internet. I'll call the right-hand circle E for email. Whenever I'm doing a Venn diagram, I always want to start out with what's in the middle, the overlap. How many kids are in the overlap? Put six kids right here. How many students surf the internet? Six. Ah. Okay. The most common, you, you, by the way, you're both right and you're both wrong depending on what you were thinking. 
Brooke, I see a lot of kids look up, look up. They do this, and that's incorrect. Why? Because now you're actually saying there's 22 kids surfing the internet. So Christine, what did you say? There is a total of 16 kids. Brooke, I totally agree with you. But Christine, how many kids only surf the internet? What am I going to put in that little left-hand section of the circle? Christine, a 10. See it? How many kids grand total do email? 10. How many kids only do email but don't surf the web? What's going to go on the little right-hand chunk of the circle? Four. Oh, by the way, what would go outside both circles? How many kids don't surf the internet or use email? And the reason, Seb, I would use a Venn diagram if it was a multi-part question, because now all the answers are there. What if they said, hey, what's the probability that a kid uses email but doesn't surf the internet? Four out of 10. Sorry, four out of 30. Hey, what's the probability that a kid does not use the internet or email? Uh, 10 out of 30. What's the probability that a kid only uses the internet but doesn't have an email account? Also 10 out of 30. They're, they're all staring out at me. <coughs> Probability of I or E, it's one or the other or both. 10 plus 4 plus 6, you get the same answer. The key for doing a Venn diagram, though, is start with the overlap. Example 3. Wilma the WebWiz submits designs, sorry, sits, submits bids on two web design projects. She thinks she has a 70% chance of getting the first project, but only a 50% chance of getting the second. She puts only a 25% chance on getting neither of the two projects. Find the probability that she gets, is there an A, B, C, D here? Venn diagram is going to be a better bet. Over here, draw a little rectangle. And we'll have two overlapping circles. We'll call this left-hand circle the first project. We'll call this right-hand circle the second project. So far, so good? Do they tell me the probability that she gets both? Read the question very, very carefully. Do they tell me the overlap, the and, the both? Brooke, you're good? I need you to focus. This is important. Christina, stop distracting her. Let me ask this again. This is, folks, this is crucial. Do they tell me both? Do they tell me the overlap? Do they tell me the and? Read the question, because if you can't find this, I can't help you. Do they? Rachel, do they tell? No. But where did I say to start? I said to always start with the overlap. Did they tell me the overlap, though? Problem. You know what? Not a problem. Put an X there. Rachel, read to me the second sentence, starting with the word she thinks. OK, stop. That first project has to have a 70% chance. First of all, what's 70% as a decimal? OK, 0.7. Look up. This would be wrong. The same way as putting a 16 right here would have been wrong. What you had to do was you had to say, oh, it's going to be 16 minus the overlap. That's what goes there. What's the overlap here? Okay. Jake, can you read to me after the comma, starting with the word but? Just has 50% chance of getting the second. Okay. The second, this would be wrong. Mm -hmm. 
That's correct, because that's what you would have done had you known the numbers. Is that okay? Yeah. Justin, can you read to me the next sentence, starting with she puts? She puts only a 25% chance on getting neither of the two projects. Where would neither be? Ah! And the only way we can do this question, instead of giving us the overlap, they told us the neither, and that's going to help this fall apart. Because if I add this percentage, this percentage, this percentage, and this percentage, if I add up all of the outcomes, what did we say if you add up all the possibilities they have to add to? 100%. Or 1%. They have to, in other words, if I add up every single circle and section, it's got to add, that's counting every possibility that has to add up to 100%. That's going to give us an equation. My equation is going to look like this. That plus that, the middle, plus that, plus that. If I add up every section, that has to add to 1. Doing this one with a formula would be very difficult. With a Venn diagram, it's much, much, much more visual. Um, Emma, what's negative x plus x? I would argue those guys just cancel quite nicely. I also have some like terms. I have 0.7 plus 0.5 plus 0.25. What is 0.7 plus 0.5 plus 0.25? What is 0.7 plus 0.5 plus 0.25? Can't be a 12, it's decimals. I need an answer. Some, it, you got your calculators or it in your head, but uh, come on. I need a certain answer, not a guess. 1.45, thank you. So this ends up being 1.45 minus x equals 1. Now, you could actually continue to solve this, but look, 1.45 take away what equals 1? Isn't, doesn't x have to be 0.45? Usually, Brooke, on this line, you can say, uh, you know what, since it has to work out to 1, I'm pretty sure x must have been the little decimal to make it equal 1. You okay with that? You, you could minus 1.45 from both sides and divide by negative and all your equation solving gunk. I'm going to say, you know what? What's x? What's x? What's x? In my diagram, what's x? What's x? What's x? So in my diagram, what's x? So up here, I'm going to put 0.45. What number actually goes in this left-hand circle? No. What's x? What's this say here? 0.7 minus x. What is it, Christina? Ah, cross that out. Put a 0.25 there. Cross it out so you can still see what we wrote to start out so that you know what the heck we did. Hey, what's going to go in this right-hand small circle right here? All right, let's answer the questions. Caitlin, what's A asking me to find? Hey, what is the probability that she gets both? Can you see it from the Venn diagram? Which number is both? Yeah. 0.45, or as a percentage, she's got a 45% chance of getting both projects. Brandon, what's B asking me to find? At least one or two projects. At least one of the two? Yeah. So that means one or the other or both. You know what? That's going to be at least one 
or the other, or both. Right? I think 0.75 or 75%. Yep. Good. Hey, Brooke, read to me C. Hey, which of those numbers is only the first project but not the second one? Foster. Yeah. Point two, right, right. <coughs> Colin, read D. This means only one, but not both. I guess that's going to be, she's got a 25% chance of getting the first one and a 5% chance of getting the second one, I guess she's got a 0.3 or 30% chance of getting both, uh, sorry, of getting one or the other, but not getting both, okay? And certainly if you're a major company, you can look at stuff like this as, as part of your business models, making predictions about how many workers you need to hire, et cetera. D, okay, read me D. That means one or the other, but not both. Here's, here's one, here's the other. And or does mean add, right? 25 and five, 30% chance, but not getting both. I didn't count that, I ignored it. Is that all right? You folks have a half page Still of blank, yes? Good. Write this down, please. How can we tell if events are mutually exclusive? I said this, but we never wrote this down, okay? How to tell if events are mutually exclusive? And then I wrote number one, if we know what the events are, we just ask, can these events happen at the same time? Is it possible? And my example, which I've used already, event A is you roll an odd number on a die. Event B is you roll an even number on a die. Are A and B mutually exclusive? Can you be odd and even at the same time? Nope, so they are mutually exclusive, there's no overlap. So are they mutually exclusive? Yep. Next example, event A, pick an ace. Event B, pick a spade. Are these mutually exclusive? Can you be an ace and a spade at the same time? You can, then you're not mutually exclusive. No. That one kids get intuitively. Okay. I wrote it down, but that one most people figure out pretty quickly. What I really want to talk about, Justin, is the mathematical definition of mutual exclusivity. So when you got that written down, we'll move to the second situation where we don't know what the events are. They've just given us some numbers.
sorry I didn't type this up. I thought of adding this last night because I read through the lesson and I went, ah, you know what? I didn't explain it well. So I've added it to next year's lesson. So if you want this again properly without having to write this out, flunk. Rosanna's enjoying her glass. You with me? That's physics, but this is math. What if we don't actually know what the events are? We use the formula. Formula number six on your pink sheet, the one that comes in two versions. If one version is true, you know they're mutually exclusive. Otherwise, you know they're not mutually exclusive. So I wrote down here, if they're mutually exclusive, then A or B is, sorry, probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B. Now it is minus the overlap, but if the overlap is zero, then this will be true. If there is no and, then that will be true. If that's true, then you can say, even though if I don't know what the events are, they have to be mutually exclusive. Let me show you what I mean. Ready, Cole? Here's an example. Suppose I told you the probability of A was 0.4, 40%. And the probability of B was 0.3, 30%. And I told you the probability of A or B was 0.65. Here's the quick check. Before writing this down, just put your pencils down for a second. Look up. Put your pencils down. What does or mean? What does or mean? Uh, if you add A, probability of A, and the probability of B, what do you get in your head? 0.7. Did, you get, did they tell you the answer was 0.7? No. Then those mu there must have been an overlap that we subtracted. This is how I can tell. These can't be mutually exclusive. There must be some overlap. And you know what? Not only can I say no, they're not, I can tell you what the overlap must have been. I think 5%, 0.05. You can figure out the and. So write that down, and we'll even add the answers. Are they mutually exclusive? No. Why? The overlap must have been that, because that's what's missing to make that a true statement. That plus that minus the overlap would give me that. Colin, decimals, it's not too bad. Fractions, it's a little tough. Oh, wait a minute. Did I just show you how you can use your fraction buttons on your calculator if you suck? Which most of you do at fractions. The next couple you can write down if you want, or you can just get your calculators out and follow along. It's up to you. Okay. Suppose I told you that the probability of A was 5 twelfths and the probability of B was 1 third. All right. Oh, and A or B, I told you, was 2 thirds. What you're really asking here, Rachel, is, is that plus that equal to that or was there some overlap? So get your calculators out. Use your fraction button to be lazy. I don't mind. 5 fraction 12 plus 1 fraction 3 equals, equals what? 3 quarters. That's or. No, no, no. What did they tell me or was? 2 thirds? Yes? So first of all, I can say no, and not only that, I can tell you what and must have been. Because if I take this and I subtract two thirds, the overlap, you know what? The overlap must have been one twelfth. You okay with that, Silka? 
In other words, I'm saying get comfy with your fraction button. The actual equation, Brandon, must have been this. That plus that minus that gave you order. There must have been an overlap. I think one more and I'm done? Yeah. What if I told you the probability of A was one third and the probability of B was one fifth? And the reason I have to do this mathematically, Caitlin, is they haven't told me what the events are. If they tell me what the events are, oh, one's a red card, one's a black card, I can tell you. They're mutually exclusive. They can't happen at the same time. But if they just give me numbers, okay, I gotta scratch my brain a little bit. Again, I would say, okay, one third plus one fifth equals, ah, eight over 15. And what did they tell me or was? Eight over 15. Are these mutually exclusive? Yes. Why? No need for an and. And is zero. No overlap. That okay, I hope? What's your homework? What's your homework? You get about 25 minutes. I was trying to give you half an hour to work on it. We're going to be close. You get about 25 minutes. Uh, homework, you can do number one. Number one, they're telling you the events, so you should be able to just reason your way Hey, can these happen at the same time or not? Are they mutually exclusive or not? Number two, they're giving you Venn diagrams. There it's a little easier also to tell mutually exclusive or if there's overlap, it's where there's overlapping circles. Number four. Uh, five is good. Six is good, cards. I think I'm gonna be assigning most of this. Seven is good. Seven, my hint is I would use a Venn diagram. Why, is there a part A and a part B? Yeah. Are there two different groups? I see one group that says have a computer and one group that says have internet, so that works for two circles. And here's the key. They've told me the overlap. They've told me the middle circle. That's how I know I would use a Venn diagram. Number eight is tricky. Number eight, my math 12s from the old course almost always ask me about, but I'm curious to see if you can figure it out. Again, my suggestion here is I would use a Venn diagram. The problem is they gave you some as numbers and some as percentages. You're either going to have to go all percentages or all numbers. I would go all percentages as decimals. Nine is good. Mr. Duck, don't worry. Yeah, and 11 and 12. So I think I assigned everything. The answers are there. I'll give you some time on Monday. Monday, we'll probably get through about a half a lesson. We'll finish the half lesson on Wednesday and hopefully no homework for the Christmas break if we play our cards right. That's my goal. <laughs>